What is a boat doing in the middle of a desert? You would expect to find a seagoing vessel closer to shore. This is the question archaeologists had been asking for decades. In 1988, there was a storm near one of the most important archaeological sites in ancient Egypt. A wooden structure emerged from the sand. It was hollowed out by termites. Scientists were determined to solve its mystery. In 2000, they began excavating the site near Abydos, Ubaidos. An American team of experts soon discovered a boat that was 70 feet long, and it wasn't alone. In total, there were 14 boats neatly resting next to each other. It was impossible to completely dig out the boats because of their poor condition. Luckily, the wood was preserved enough to get a sample. Analyses revealed that the boats were around 5,000 years old, the oldest fleet in human history to this date. The time of their construction predates the pyramids at Giza by half a millennium. Each ship of the fleet rested in a vault that matched its dimensions. The room was roughly a third of the size of a tennis court. It had mud brick walls that featured more than 120 drawings of boats. Ancient Egyptians incised them on whitewashed walls that were excellently preserved. Scientists have known about these mysterious chambers for well over a century, 1901, 1902. A British archaeologist, Arthur Weigel, stumbled upon a strange structure west of the River Nile. His team caught a glimpse of the interior walls. Sadly, a section of the roof collapsed, so they had to call off further exploration. Researchers abandoned the site, but its location remained on the maps. The boat's position first led scientists to think that they rested on a bank of the mighty Nile. But there was a problem with this theory. Today, the river flows almost seven miles west of Abydos. Further studies of the surrounding terrain showed the Nile didn't change its course throughout history. Also, if the boats floated near a dock, they would be in unstable positions. The 14 vessels at Abydos were perfectly parallel to each other. There was only one conclusion possible. Someone had deliberately placed them like that. They must have gone through a lot of effort. Each boat had enough room for up to 30 rowers. These vessels could really float. They weren't models, but scholars still don't know if they actually sailed any body of water in ancient Egypt. This doesn't diminish the importance of the find. Previously, archeologists found only small-scale models. In King Tut's tomb alone, there were 35 boat models. For a long time, these figurines were the only clues as to how ancient Egyptian vessels looked like. The boat's design confirms that they were the real deal. They are the earliest surviving examples of something called built boats. Ancient people constructed primitive vessels by hollowing out large tree trunks. The alternative was reed that was tied together to form a raft. The boats at Abydos had planks tied together. This was a major breakthrough in shipbuilding. During their lifetime, the boats must have seemed impressive. Timber was a valuable commodity at the time. There was no wood in the desert. Cedar had to be imported from Lebanon. The only person who could afford such luxury was the pharaoh. Studying the area around the ancient fleet provided more answers. Scientists discovered a mud brick structure where Egyptians worshiped the pharaoh. Its approximate date of construction matches that of the wooden boats. The same bricks out of which this building was made were used to encase the fleet. At the time of their construction, the rooms they were stored in had a ceiling. That's the section that archeologists stumbled upon in the early 20th century. Just like mummies and coffins, these marvelous ships rested inside splendid vaults. The exterior of these rooms was also impressive. The outer walls originally had a plaster of white limestone. It reflected sunlight. In the desert sun, the structure housing the boats must have shone from miles away. Ancient Egyptian builders used the same technique to cover the pyramids 500 years later. Today, their surface looks jagged, but it wasn't always like this. When they were constructed, the pyramids had a top layer of fine white limestone. Their surface was smooth and it gleamed in the sunlight. Instead of stairs, the outer layer of the pyramids was more of a sleek ramp. Archaeologists were left with one final question. Which pharaoh owned the fleet? The answer lay just a mile from the site. This is where the tomb of a pharaoh from the 5th dynasty rested, King Senwasrit III. Its time and style of construction matched the ones of the chambers with boats. The very end of his rule might explain how the boats ended up in the middle of the desert. The pharaoh probably passed away in northern Egypt. Then his body was transported down the Nile to Abydos in a marvelous procession of decorated boats.
The vessels were later lowered to chambers near the final resting place of their owner. This had a symbolic meaning. In the ancient Egyptians' belief system, ships played a key role. Their supreme deity was Ra. He traveled through the sky during the day in the form of the sun. At nighttime, he sailed through the netherworld in a solar boat. The pharaoh identified himself with Ra. That's why he needed boats in the afterlife. That was the only way to regenerate himself. Just as the sun rises every day above the horizon. This belief existed for thousands of years. The more famous pharaoh Khufu also had a ship. Scientists found it in 1954 next to his pyramid at Giza. It is some four centuries younger than the fleet at Abydos. But Khufu's ship was almost two times longer. The Great Pyramid of Giza and King Tut's tomb are some of the most famous archaeological finds in Egypt. But there are many more secrets hiding beneath the endless sands of the Sahara Desert. Recently, 2020, archaeologists found a lost city there. They have labeled it as the most important discovery since King Tut's tomb, 1922. The city of Aten is some 3,000 years old. Historians hope it will give them a unique insight into the everyday life of ancient Egyptians. The famous archaeologist and Egyptologist Zahi Hawass proclaimed the site a lost golden city. Aten sits some 300 miles south of Egypt's capital Cairo. It is close to the famous Valley of the Kings. Archaeologists first found sections of mud brick walls that spread out in all directions. They discovered complete rooms with tools of everyday life inside. The research team unearthed a bakery, a residential neighborhood, and an administrative district. They all date back to the time when the Egyptian civilization was the wealthiest in its long history. They were also the first to make objects from iron. In 1911, scientists found a set of iron beads near a village in Lower Egypt, El Gertza. These are the earliest known iron artifacts. The discovery is literally out of this world. Ancient people made them by beating into shape a piece of a meteorite. The nine beads were once part of an ornate necklace. They are now blackened and corroded, which is perfectly normal for a piece of jewelry that is over 5,000 years old. They consist of an iron-nickel alloy. Researchers were impressed by the skill of ancient jewelers who processed the beads. Their craftsmanship is more impressive when you think that they didn't know the stellar origins of the material. The Great Pyramid of Giza also has a remarkable feature. An international research group investigated the electromagnetic response of the structure to radio waves. They found that the pyramid has the ability to concentrate electromagnetic energy inside it. This occurred inside its chambers as well as under the pyramid's base. It contains an underground unfinished chamber. It seems that the electromagnetic response is connected with the properties of limestone, the Great Pyramid's main building material. The research results might have a practical application. The way solar cells and nanosensors function could be improved by this remarkable find. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.